Good morning. Good to see all of you up here today. I counted 27 of you up here today. That's a lot of you today. Good to have you all with us. I brought a present with me today. Guess who that's for? Me? Jesus? Okay. For me, I don't see a name tag on it. Actually, I didn't put a tag on it, but it's for all of you. Okay. But before we, before we uh, can open it, we've got to talk about patience. Okay. What is, who can tell me what patience is? Yes. You have to wait. Patience means you have to wait for something, right? What are some things you have to be patient and wait for? Yes. It's a boring thing. Patience is a boring thing. <laughs> I suppose waiting can be boring sometimes. Yeah, it probably can. What are some things you have to wait for? Fish. When you're fishing, you might have to wait to get a bite. That's good. I like that. Okay. What are some other things you might have to wait for? To get into a football game, you might have to wait in line, huh? For tickets or whatever. Yes. Opening present. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We know where some people's focus is. Yes. Getting into heaven, yeah, that's true. When we, when we come to believe in Jesus, he doesn't take us to heaven right away, right? We have to stay here for a while, okay? Yes? You have to wait for mom to peel oranges. That, wonder if you've been, have you been making cookies that have oranges, orange peel in them? No? You just need to wait for mom so you can eat the orange. Mom has to peel it, okay? All right. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we have to wait for, okay? Um, yes, whatever that present is. We're going to open it in a minute, okay? But I wanted to tell you that Jesus is, or the James, rather, who is, who is actually Jesus' brother, okay? He was a child of Mary and Joseph that, that they had after Jesus was born. He's, so he's Jesus' younger brother. He wrote about patience in our lesson for today, and one of the things he says is be patient with one another. Okay? So sometimes we have to be patient with each other. Now, how many of you have brothers and sisters at home? Okay. Is it hard to be patient with your brothers and sisters sometimes? Yes. Okay. Why? Because they're annoying, right? I can relate to that. I had two brothers. Okay. One of my brothers would purposely try to annoy me because he knew what made me mad so he would purposely do things to get me mad okay and I would not be patient with him okay I was not patient with him when I was younger okay now though it turns out he's a pretty good guy okay so if I had been a little patient with him and let him grow up a little bit he probably would have stopped annoying me yes he's got to fight back well I did, but that wasn't always the best thing either, right? Because then, then, then what happens? You get in trouble, right? He got me in trouble for fighting, okay? That's what, that's what happens, okay? Okay, so, so we, J James tells us that we need to be patient with one another, and he says the reason we're patient with one another is because we remember that God is patient with us, Right? Because we some do we ever we probably do some things that God looks down on and says you know that wasn't very nice, okay, okay. But God is patient with us. He sent Jesus to die for all of our sins, all those things that we do that aren't very nice. Okay, He sent Jesus to die for all of our sins, and because Jesus took them away, God says, "I forgive you. I can be patient with you, and I can wait for a long time for you maybe to stop doing those things." Okay. Sometimes God has to wait a long time. He had to wait a long time for my brother to stop annoying me, and he had to wait a long time for me to st stop responding to my brother annoying me. But it turned out we don't fight anymore. Okay. So, um, so God is patient with us. He waits, and he forgives. And that's what we are to do with one another as well. We're to wait for, for them to, to grow up a little bit. We're to, we're to forgive them when, they, when they're mean to us or when, they, when they're mean to us. And we can do that because God has forgiven us and he's patient with us. Okay. Now, you've been real patient, so you get to open the box. Okay. Who, I should not ask this because I'm going to get everybody a hand raised. Who wants to open the box? 
Okay. I figured that there would be a lot of people that wanted to open the box. <laughs> I don't think all of you can open the box. So then I should do it? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Sophia. Okay. But uh, there's something in there for everybody. She just gets to open it because she's one of the youngest. Okay. So be patient. There's something in there for everybody. You're five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Can you lift the lid? Okay. Okay, we got Tootsie Rolls. So there's 27 of you. There's enough for two each, okay? So you can each take two and go back to your seats, okay? Uh, I'll take it. Just put it on the seat there. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Two each. You get two. You're welcome. Okay. Very good. You guys get to finish them. Take as many as you want. I don't want them. <laughs> You've already had chocolate, I can tell. <laughs> oh, it's a cold sore. Oh, okay. It looked like chocolate. <laughs> Pointed his reign on earth begun. Break oppression. To set the captive free, to take away transgression and rule in equity. He comes with rescue speedy to those who suffer wrong, to help the poor and needy and bid the weak be strong to give them songs for sighing their darkness turn to light whose souls condemned and dying were precious in his sight he shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth. Love, joy, and hope like flowers spring in his path to birth. Before him on the mountains shall peace the herald go and righteousness in fountains from hill to valley flow. Kings shall fall down before him and gold and incense bring. All nations shall adore him, his praise all people sing. To him shall prayer unceasing and daily vows ascend. His kingdom still increasing, a kingdom without end. For every foe victorious, he on his throne shall rest.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God on which we base our meditation this morning is the epistle lesson from James that we read earlier. We hear again these words, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, there is a poem I remember. I don't remember the author's name. It's a quick one. It goes like this. To live above with the saints we love, now that is greatest glory. To live below with the saints we know, now that's a different story. Of course, the poet has hit the nail right on the head. The saints above, our loved ones that have gone before us to heaven, are free from sin. They are holy. When we also tend to remember only the good things about them. The saints below... The family members and church members we deal with here on earth, they are also sinners. And sometimes their sins are on full display. It can be difficult to deal with the faults of others, as it is difficult for them to deal with ours. This is why James, in talking about life in the church as we wait for the coming of Christ at the end of time, says, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. The Greeks had two words for patience, and James uses them both in our text for today. They translate into English as patience and steadfastness. The word translated patience means long-suffering. It's an attitude or quality that enables a person to deal with difficult people or circumstances for a long time without getting angry or complaining. The word translated steadfastness means endurance or perseverance, literally remaining under a difficult situation without giving in. We could say that steadfastness is the end result of the quality of patience. Patience and steadfastness is the theme for this section of James. Both are necessary for believers as we wait for Jesus' coming. We are called to endure steadfastly under trial as we wait for Jesus' coming and to be patient and long-suffering with one another as well. In this life, our patience is often tested. Think of a baseball team out in the field. Fielders love it when a, person, when a pitcher works quickly. They know they have to be ready because the ball could be hit to them at any moment. When the pitcher takes his time between pitches, it's easy for fielders to get distracted and lose focus. Thus, the need to be patient for the coming of the Lord. It may seem like Jesus is taking his own sweet time in coming again, and we can easily get distracted. James reminds us, establish your hearts. Don't let your guard down. The coming of the Lord is at hand. But patience is not always easy. I would guess that if I asked all of you how many of you could use more patience, I'd have 100% of you raising your hands. It's really easy to lose patience, isn't it? I find myself doing it more than I would like. Probably you do too. It's hard sometimes to be patient with others. Your children, your parents, your students, your co-workers, your government officials, your fellow church members are not perfect people. And neither are you. We expect Christians maybe to behave better than others, but as Martin Luther reminds us, Christians are sinners and saints at the same time. We are saints because Jesus died for us, and yet we still have a sinful nature that often comes out in our everyday lives. So your neighbor's sins and faults are often on full display, and yours are on display to your neighbor. Families, in particular, have to deal with each other's faults on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's use one cartoon family as an example. Big sister 
is a tattletale. Little brother is destructive and always makes a mess of things. Dad is good at avoiding helping mom with the kids. And mom just wants some peace and quiet. Now that may, may or may not be your family. But one thing is for sure, you all know each other's shortcomings. You deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis. And impatience can lead to grumbling and complaining. The Eighth Commandment tells us we should speak well of our neighbor and explain everything in the kindest way. That's often not how we talk about people, though. We often bring up their faults. Ah, that kid trampled on my flowers again. Why don't his parents do something about that? I can never find anything after so-and-so has been in the kitchen. Or, we never see those people in church. Criticizing is easier than encouraging. Tearing down is easier than building up. It's sometimes even hard for us to be patient with God. Even people like Job and the prophets, people that James points to as examples of steadfastness and patience, hanging in there under trial, grew impatient with God. We hear Jeremiah complaining when he speaks God's word and gets nothing but hatred for it. At first, Job says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the longer his suffering continues, the more frustrated with God he gets. Sometimes we can get impatient with God too. Sometimes older people, perhaps weary of the aches and pains, wonder aloud, why hasn't God taken me yet? Or sometimes we look at the wickedness in the world around us and we want the Lord just to come and put a stop to it. We are not good at waiting. We readily pray, deliver us from evil, but we often want to add, right now. That's not how Jesus taught the prayer, though. His word also tells us to be patient, and that's hard. Thanks be to God, though, he is patient with us. James uses Job as an example. Even though Job complained against God, remember how it all turned out? Job repented and the Lord blessed him with even more than he had before. James says, you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. There is a reason why God doesn't do everything we want right away. We know the reason Jesus hasn't come yet. He is waiting for all to come to repentance. God has set a day when Jesus will return, but until then, he is giving as many people as possible a chance to believe in him and be welcomed into heaven. God is compassionate and merciful. Compassionate means that God understands. He knows that classmates' habits can be annoying to you. He knows your little brother can drive you crazy. He knows that... It grates on you when you find the kitchen messed up after someone else has used the dishes. He knows that you get frustrated when you have to tell your kids the same thing for the third time. God knows our weaknesses. He sees what our sins have done to us. He has pity. He feels sorry for us, and he wants to help. Merciful means God does not get angry with us as we deserve. When the prophet Elijah was discouraged and complained to God because he had been faithful and yet the king was seeking to take his life, God did not get angry with him for going into hiding and forsaking his duties. Instead, he encouraged Elijah by saying there were still 7,000 like him that had not forsaken God to serve Baal. And he sent Elijah back to work as his messenger. When we get impatient with him and with others as we wait for Christ's coming, God redirects us to the manger and to the cross. God, in his compassion and mercy for us, sent his only son. He sent Jesus to bear our sin and to be our savior. Jesus, as our substitute, took our weakness into himself. He let himself be crucified for our sin. He is the defining example of steadfastness. He remained under the cross. He endured all that suffering and pain and shame without grumbling or complaining. He endured for you and for me so that he could take away our sin to make sure that our impatience and lack of steadfastness would not separate us from God eternally. Jesus also shows the other kind of patience with us. He is long-suffering. He waits and waits for us to come to God in repentance and faith. He is patient while the Holy Spirit brings us to faith and works his sanctifying change in our lives. And when we come to him, our Father's arms are wide open. 
ready to embrace us and call us his sons or daughters. The promise God makes to you in baptism is that he will always love you. He will always be patient with you. Your sins will make him sad, but he will never take his love away from you. You will always be his child. You will always have his promise of eternal life in heaven. So you can be patient until the coming of the Lord. You can wait steadfast in faith, knowing that your eternal life is secure through Jesus and that God's patience simply means that more people will be in heaven. And you can also be patient here below with the saints you know, the saints that may drive you crazy sometimes but are still your brothers and sisters in Christ. Where do you get such patience? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. That's the long-suffering kind. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The Holy Spirit works patience in you as you remain steadfast in your faith. That means being where the Holy Spirit is, hearing God's word as it is preached and taught, receiving Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins and for strength to live as true saints, God's people made holy in Jesus. So look to Jesus. Look to the manger and to the cross. God is compassionate and merciful. He understands your weakness. He does not deal with you as your sins deserve. Instead, he is patient with you, leading you to repentance and faith, and then shaping you into the person that he wants you to be. You will be considered blessed as you remain steadfast in faith. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated as the offering is received.